We can do better providing employees access to their critical work resources, no matter where they are. If you're still using a traditional VPN, we can do better. Let's discuss zero trust network access and talk about how that can replace the traditional VPN. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping technology leaders make great business decisions. And traditional networking methods that rely on hardware-based VPNs is not a great business decision in this day and age. VPNs just aren't as practical for securing today's network environment. VPNs are nearly 30 years old, invented when the internet access was in its infancy, and security and access to workloads were very different. Back then, through just until a few years ago, the old hub-and-spoke approach and data centers was fine. A VPN was more or less fine as well. People were still going to work at their offices five days a week, and all the corporate resources were on company-managed servers and some computer closets. If you had a remote employee, they were typically the exception, and they understood that getting back to corporate resources was a bit of a challenge. You were generally just coming to the data center and not seeking internet access over that VPN as well. Internet access was generally done outside the VPN, at least that's been my experience. But the cloud, in combination with, with a truly mobile workforce, as well as a heightened uh, concern around Cybersecurity has changed all of that. And IT managers have to organize and accommodate not only on-prem corporate resources, but cloud-based services such as Salesforce, Office 365, and so forth. To deal with this evolution and a mobile workforce that we have, um, we've developed two basic solutions. The first is to use that legacy VPN to connect to the business network and then jump to uh, internet resources from there. It's not a great experience for IT since this usually requires manual configuration at the router level and latency complaints that can be hard to solve uh, from the end user. Uh, speaking of the end user, it's not that great of an environment when more and more people are working remotely, a fact that's not likely to change even though we're getting back to the office in in-person meetings. A full 90% of companies survey still plan on sticking with some remote or hybrid work model in, uh, and in short, the remote revolution is here to stay. So let's take a look at the second option, Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA, and see how that compares to an on-prem hardware solution. Now, if you're not familiar with ZTNA, it starts from a position of denying access to everything for everyone. And then you open up the resources based upon the rules that you create. I like to use a hypothetical exclusive hotel analogy. Uh, imagine the most exclusive hotel possible, a place where the famous go and don't want to be seen or see anyone else. Now, I know this analogy is imperfect, but just work with me on this. If you have a better way of explaining it, please share uh, in the comments. I'd love to get uh, a new way of sharing how ZTNA works with people who aren't familiar with the concept. But anyway. I've also got some deeper dives on my channel. I'm gonna put a link to one of those videos in the description of this video, in the notes of this video. So if you wanna get some more information on ZTNA, you'll have a, a resource. I'm not gonna go into the details too much on uh, this video. So ZTNA is like staying in, the, in this exclusive hotel. Your identity is confirmed before you even enter the property. You go straight through the lobby without seeing a soul, you get on the elevator and the only floor button that's presented is yours. You can't even see the other floors as options. And as you're walking down the hallway to your room, you can't even see that there might be other rooms nearby. The only door you can see is yours. You use your key that only allows you access to your particular room. And you have no idea what other rooms or other guests are at the hotel, nor do they see you or your room. So that's how I explain ZTNA to others, not as familiar with the concept. If a bad actor tries to impersonate our hypothetical celebrity, they may get into the hotel. They may even get access to our room, but the only thing that they can see is that particular room. That limits the attack surface to a very small segment of your environment. So what are the advantages of ZTNA over the traditional VPN? Well, first is cost. 
Zero Trust Network Access reduces configuration and complexity, as well as onboarding time. Cloud security services eliminate the need for storage and maintenance. On the VPN side, hardware st is still required, and it requires a manual installation and configuration and physical storage space. You need to install and maintain the platform on an ongoing basis, and it requires trained people to make those installations and those upgrades. ZTNA does typically cost a little more than a traditional VPN license, but you get much more in my view. For unified management, ZTNA networks and users are easily managed from one single platform. On the VPN side, Hardware is individually managed across multiple offices with complex interfaces, unless you have a management platform, which typically is an extra cost and extra configuration on your part. With regard to network performance, you get faster connections with ZTNA and better network performance overall with users able to route more directly to their desired resources, whether they be in the data center or in the cloud. For VPNs, you generally have one or two data centers for your on-prem platform, it's a non-optimal uh, traffic routing that causes users to experience low performance. So everyone has to be forced through this, your one or two data centers, through your VPN platform, through your security stack in general, and then they get it to go out to the internet, do their work, and that traffic has to come back through the data center to ultimately be uh, delivered over the VPN tunnel back to the user. It's referred to as hairpinning. I've got a bunch of videos on hairpinning and why it's not a good idea. Um, so in terms of user identification now, let's move on to the next one. Uh, user access with identification and multi-factor authentication is available with ZTNA. With VPNs, user identities have to be managed across multiple firewalls, and your identity platforms that you can choose from and integrate with may be limited. With ZTNA, well, you get uh, zero trust application access as the name would imply. You can provide access to as many or as few applications as the user requires. With a VPN, there's no inherent segmentation of application access. And that gets us to our last item, micro-segmentation. So when users access only permitted resources across the network with ZTNA, um, but you have to separately segment and manage those segments or micro-segments in your network with a traditional VPN. And this can be extremely complex and expensive. I guess to sum this up, today's mobile corporate worker needs a new solution that allows them to access the internet securely without having to jump through an overly complex network. That's the promise of ZTNA. In fact, using ZTNA will turn the internet itself into your corporate network. No more forcing traffic through headquarters or branch offices that could be hundreds of miles or even thousands of miles away. Instead, you hit the cloud services more directly. Now we'll say you do have to go through most ZTNA provider networks. And so it's not truly a direct route to those cloud workloads, but if your ZTNA provider has a good pop density and um, would expect a vastly superior experience to the traditional VPN. So pop density and locations are one of your more important purchasing considerations when you're looking at ZTNA. I just wanted to mention one, um, that one of the killer features in this model is a device posture check, which takes permission policies right down to each employee's uh, end user device. So um, it sets the requirements for individual devices before they ever gain access to the company resources. And as it requires attributes such as um, the presence or specific anti uh, presence of a specific antivirus solution, an operating system update, or specific files or certificates being present on that device. And yes, device posture checks are now available from some VPN platforms, but I've heard mixed reviews there. We also want ZTNA to address outside contractors and provide them with an agentless access feature. This feature allows you to provide limited access through a web-based portal to third-party contractors and employees who need access from any device. The best part is that all of this can be deployed with a few clicks and finished within minutes or maybe a few hours, depending upon the size of, of your network. So that's ZTNA. It used to be super hard to deploy, not gonna, uh, not gonna lie there. 
but improvements have been dramatic and it's a mature offering at this stage. If you want to continue the conversation, feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description of this video. If you got some value, I'd appreciate a like or thumbs up below. And thank you very much for doing that in advance. And if you want to find your way back to this channel in the future, just hit that subscribe button. That will allow you to come back here at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.